Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Weekly News Update. Normally I do these intros on screen, but things have changed a little bit in the studio. I should be back on screen uh, next week, and I'm also recording this in a slightly different place. So the audio might sound a little bit different this episode, and in general, all of last week, uh, the video content was pretty light, and we should be back on track for next week. But anyways, this is the LEGO Weekly News Update. Plenty of things happened in the world of LEGO this week, and speaking of light video content we did not have a new custom build that came out for this friday so i would just like to say if you want to support us here at the channel we've got a web store that sells custom lego instructions really high quality stuff i highly recommend you check out our web store www.brickvault.toys there's some amazing custom lego creations we work with designers from all over the world and if you like high quality very detailed lego custom builds it certainly is worth checking out now when it comes to the first story or stories of the week. Let's start off with Lego Ideas. There are two different projects that got 10,000 votes of support this week. Lego Ideas being, of course, the website where if you submit your project idea, people vote on the idea. And if it gets 10,000 votes of support, then it enters the review stage where the Lego official team takes a look at your project and truly considers whether or not it should become an official set. So anyways, the first one that got 10,000 votes of support this week was the Seinfeld 30th Anniversary set from Brent Waller. I believe we did mention this set, uh, I want to say a few weeks back, because it certainly had a lot of traction. And recently, if you've been paying attention to what's getting voted through for ideas, it's a lot of old school sitcoms that have been popular back in the 90s and 80s. Anyways, I'm a fan of this show. I think they did a good job of laying out Jerry's apartment. You get, of course, all the main characters. And this is certainly an opportunity for old school fans of the show to get their favorite scene or one of their favorite backdrops. It was going to be either this or the diner, that would be my guess, uh, but built in Lego form. There's probably going to be some custom prints that go along to make up all the different characters. Personally, I'd be looking forward to getting Kramer or George the most out of any of them, and I'm sure there'd be a lot of Easter eggs from certain episodes kind of tucked away in the final build, if it gets approved. Now, speaking of if it gets approved, let's jump on over to the next one, this is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Stables. I haven't actually played Breath of the Wild, I played the beginning of it, so this doesn't actually look familiar to me personally, but I do hear good things about the game, and I have been wanting LEGO to embrace the Nintendo or Link or Mario uh, themes for a very, very long time. The original designer of this model is Han, was yellow first, it's a great name once again, and there's a lot of fun details included. It's actually just kind of a cool scene or setting in general. My theory is that the licensing for this set would be a nightmare for LEGO. In general, Nintendo is pretty tight-lipped when it comes to their IP, so there's a very good chance, I mean, just logistically speaking, that this would not become a set. I certainly hope that it does, because just in general, I think LEGO having a partnership with the Nintendo license is a very, very good thing for both parties, but historically speaking, uh, it does feel kind of like a long shot. Personally, I've got a stronger connection to some of the older Zelda games, like Ocarina of time. If we had sets based on that game, that would be awesome. Also, just some old school Mario sets would be cool. Sonic the Hedgehog. They did make a Sonic the Hedgehog minifig for Dimensions, but I think there was probably like an individual licensing thing specifically with that character that LEGO managed to get a hold of. But anyways, uh, if you have a favorite Nintendo LEGO set that you'd want to see, I would love to know in the comments below. And also, interestingly enough, uh, along the same lines, the LEGO Ideas team actually had a little bit of a press release, and now there is a slight tweak to how you can submit a project to the website, and it is based on IPs. So if uh, there is an intellectual property associated with your build, they ask you if there is one, you say yes, and then it gives you a drop-down menu list of what type of IP it is, and you'll know immediately whether or not uh, that it fits in with a certain criteria, and sometimes they won't even let you submit. It looks like they won't let you submit a project that will have an IP that they already know they can't accept. The full list of what those different IPs IPs are that kind of leave you dead in the water are linked in the description below. Just like everything, I'm talking about all the articles they talk about linked in the description below. And then this week uh, earlier, there was a small teaser video that LEGO released and then 
Uh, also, the full video released for the Rebuild the World campaign came around. It came along with a full press release. There was also a media day at the LEGO house that covered even more information. But the LEGO group, in collaboration with the musician Mark Ronson, as well as uh, collaboration with other creative people around the world, have decided to start a campaign that inspires creativity in the uh, next generation of kids. During the press release, and I think in the following days, there were some creative challenges for children at the Lego house and the Rebuild the World campaign will also be associated with the Lego Life app which I'm going to assume may have some build challenges included later down the line but in reality we still don't know a whole lot about what the Rebuild the World campaign is aside from Lego just creating uh, some fun opportunities for kids and adults, I think, to participate uh, in building some creative things. This is something that I'm sure I'm going to be commenting on later in the weeks that are coming up when LEGO releases, I think, a little bit more information about it. But in general, I am a fan of LEGO just doing general outreach to kids in order for them to have fun. I don't know if this is going to be associated with the product. It doesn't seem like it. I think they're just making sure that the creative juices are flowing. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of it. Who knows how trendy this uh, Rebuild the World uh, campaign is going to end up being, but I will say that the uh, minifigure sort of associated that you see at the end, the half hunter, half bunny rabbit, will be available at select stores for a certain time. If you want to learn more about that, the, uh, the full information is linked in the description below. And if you haven't watched the full video of this thing, you should. It's super weird and actually very, very high, uh, high production. Definitely a fun little story. Now moving along to other LEGO news stories that also have a video attached to it, which make it pretty easy to talk about. The LEGO Brawls game has been announced. They teased it a long, long time ago, and it is going to be exclusive, just available so far on the Apple Arcade. What we do know about it is that it is a 4v4 multiplayer brawler, and it's being described as somewhat similar to Super Smash Bros., though it looks like the four players are all kind of together in this one uh, unit and you can design and match uh, each of the four players uh, differently, make them look how you want them to look and also give them different skills to fight in different ways during uh, your actual brawl. Who knows? The game could be good. This is one of those things where I feel like it's going to be completely reliant on the actual mechanics. It certainly has some flashy flair to it. It's kind of set up like a 2D side scroller, though it is a 3D game, and it really just will take time to tell on whether or not uh, people enjoy it. For the most part, I'm a fan of people enjoying things, so I hope they did a good job making it, and I hope people like playing it. We don't know when it's going to come out, and that's about all I can tell you for the brawler. But yes, so far, uh, I think it is just available and will be just available on the Apple Arcade. Now, this is probably my favorite little thing that I've seen announced from this last week. Blizzard, in tandem with LEGO, uh, still promoting the Overwatch sets, has created the Bastion's Brick Challenge starting from September 17th. So it's already happening now and ending on the 30th. You can earn LEGO-themed rewards within game when playing Overwatch by either playing or even watching Twitch streams streams on it. Uh, you can you can win these points by winning games in quick play or arcade or competitive and after a certain number you can actually earn the Lego built Bastion skin. That's pretty cool. I like that they uh, that they're working so close together. Blizzard is working so close with LEGO. It leaves hope for more partnerships like this in the future between other video game IPs and the brand. Personally, I'm a fan of uh, those types of collaborations, and this is a really, really good example. Personally, not the biggest fan of the color combination for this Bastion. The prime colors are just prime colors. They don't ever pop out to me in any really big way, but the actual brick-built version of Bastion here looks pretty good. Extremely similar, uh, I think, to how it looks in the, uh, the actual larger version of the set. There's also different types of spray and player icons that you can get as well as part of this challenge. And I think this is a good example of a video game slash Lego promotion working together. Tell me what you guys think. Now along the same lines, yet completely different and actually not at all along the same lines, uh, the, the VIP Reward Center has been having some interesting, unique things that you can get just on the Lego VIP page. This one for 1,500 points is the Stranger Things sketchbook. Personally, I think it actually looks kind 
kind of cool. I don't know if I would get it. I always think that the points are worth more to me personally by getting actual Lego bricks. But this draws my eye just a little bit more. This sketchbook looks like a VHS tape and it even has a sleeve that goes around the outside of the tape just like it used to be back in the day. Yet the book itself has the print that looks like uh, how the top of a normal cassette uh, looked back in the day as well. Anyways, just a sketchbook at the end of the day. 1,500 points, you tell me if that's worth it. And then finishing off uh, just a fun little article I read from Brickset where the writer talks about the differences between US and European Lego events. We here at the channel have gone to probably four or five different conventions here just in California. And as somebody who likes to travel around whenever I got the time, it was interesting to hear how in Europe they generally set up different conventions and layouts. Anyways, this is just a tiny little window into a very small niche of the Lego culture. If you wanted to read more, linked in the description below. And with that, I gotta say, uh, this is gonna be it for the Lego news. Remember, we're doing another one next week, same time on Saturday, and top 10 mocks of the week is tomorrow on Sunday. In fact, I think I'm gonna have it set up in a way where the audio is gonna be totally fixed and thing the video isn't gonna feel any different by the time I do top 10 mocks of the week tomorrow. And the regularly scheduled stuff during the week should be back on track as well. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a thumbs up or comment, do what you gotta do, and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time at Brick Vault.